From a couple hoarding over 600 cats to a man who had a rubbish pile bigger than his house, we take a look at 10 of the world's biggest hoarders. Number 10. The Couillet Brothers In March 1947, a neighbor called the authorities to let them know there was a dead body in the apartment of brothers Homer and Langley. It took the police two hours to climb through the boxes and piles of junk, phone books, trash, newspapers, and other miscellaneous stuff. And sadly, indeed, there was a dead body in the midst of all the junk. It belonged to Homer, the elder brother. Langley was nowhere to be found until three weeks later when his body was found just 10 feet away from Homer. Number 9. Alexander Kennedy Miller After Alexander Kennedy Miller's wife died, investigators found a treasure trove in his home. While this is a hoarding case, many are grateful for Miller's collection. It was well known that Miller liked to collect aircrafts and cars, but the extent of his habit wasn't known until 1996. About 50 cars were found, many of them Stutzes, as well as thousands of car parts from engines, shock absorbers, gaskets, radiator caps, just to name a few. Along with cars and planes, the Millers stored away millions in riches, including gold and silver bullion, as well as stocks, shares, and promissory notes. Number 8. Roger Blue Roger Blue was arrested and charged with 28 counts of animal neglect in what could be Iowa's most intense animal hoarding case, as authorities removed over 350 animals, including pigs, rabbits, and ducks. It was reported that there were dead animals mixed in with live animals, from bones to freshly dead carcasses. It's safe to say that sanitation was also an issue, as well as the residents being in shambles. It has been debated as to whether or not this was a hoarding case, although psychologists and authorities declared it to be so after inspecting the property. Number 7. Bettina Grossman Bettina Grossman is an artist who has been heralded as one who is suffocating in her own greatness. While it is an artistic way to put it, Bettina suffers from a hoarding disorder. With hundreds of boxes stuffed into her two-bedroom Hotel Chelsea apartment and her artwork taking up most of the space to the point where she has to sleep on a deck chair, Grossman became a recluse about 30 years ago and doesn't leave her apartment much at all. But she does converse with the neighbors from the hallway. Number 6. Kenneth Epstein After Epstein inherited his mother's duplex, neighbors began to notice things such as a high volume of junk accumulating in entranceways, as well as foul odors coming from the home. Since 2007, the home was cited for code violations, and finally intervention was necessary. Epstein had so much stuff that he had to crawl over the junk. After removing 60% of said junk, they found the bodies of 9 cats, 33 living cats, and 6 refrigerators full of food that was so decayed and rotten that it had taken on liquid form. Number 5. Jesse and Thelma Gaston Imagine having a hoarding issue so massive that you were lost in your own junk. That's what happened to 76-year-old Jesse Gaston and his 79-year-old wife, Thelma. Concerned neighbors called the police to their Chicago home after not seeing the couple for some time. And police had to break down the door to their home. Rotting food, piles of trash, and food waste greeted the authorities, and the elderly couple was found literally buried alive under all of the trash. They were then immediately taken to the hospital to be treated for malnutrition, among other health issues. Number 4. Edmund Trabus. Edmund Trabus became known to the world in 1999 from the BBC show A Life of Grime, which depicted his struggle to maintain his home and his belongings. He was a Polish war veteran who had accumulated years of junk, including rotting clothes, knickknacks, papers, and other random items that stuffed his five-bedroom home. The television program was thought to have made progress in getting Trabus some help, but a follow-up episode in 2001 showed he was back to his old habits and that his home was on the brink of collapse. Trabus later died in 2002. Number 3. Grey Gardens If Edith Bouvet Beale, Little Edie, and Edith Ewing Bouvet Beale, Big Edie, hadn't been cousin and aunt to First Lady Jackie Kennedy, perhaps these two ladies wouldn't have become the famous hoarders that they are today. They lived in an East Hampton mansion known as Grey Gardens. When sanitation workers finally entered their home, they found junk and clutter everywhere. A baffling total of 300 cats, tin cans, and fecal matter all over the place. These two captivated people so much that a documentary was made about them, called Grey Gardens. Since then, they even made a musical about the whole mess. Number 2. Penny and Steve Lefkowitz 
This couple managed to make it to the top three of the worst animal hoarding cases according to the Humane Society of the United States. They are the owners of the Haven Acres Cat Sanctuary, and on June 7th, were arrested on 47 counts of animal cruelty. Authorities seized 697 cats in total. About 100 of the cats had to be put down because of health complications. Penny and Steve had good intentions, but quickly became overwhelmed by so many residents dropping off their cats and were spending about $33,000 a year trying to maintain the sanctuary. Number 1. Richard Wallace Richard Wallace had a junk pile that was so massive, it was bigger than his house and could be seen from Google Earth. Among the piles of junk included several cars and newspapers, spanning over 34 years. It isn't clear why Wallace accumulated so much stuff in his life, but the public and his neighbors eventually had enough. When he was served with notices and orders to clean up his yard, Wallace stated that it was his human right to hoard all the junk. Eventually, with the help of neighbors, over 30 tons of junk was removed, which is why he has got to be one of the world's biggest hoarders.